Hello, hello. Hello? Okay, this thing's on. I was busy and I almost missed it. And I did just miss the start. Okay, let's do this. Example. I haven't even cleared out the old thing from my thing, so we're just gonna go with it. This is my example. Don't know what that means. Layer, layer, layer. Earth blocks 35. Okay. I have no idea what any of that means. Time to read it, I guess. Okay. Inspect the land. They marked grid. Da da da. Height difference between adjacent areas must never be more than one unit. Mine is only allowed by the symbol. Okay, so think of the area, Ma maximum number of earth blocks are being removed from the area while keeping the slope at a safe angle. Okay, so I go through all of these, I guess the first layer was one, then all of them again, and I'm like, okay, how many can I get it to? And that's basically the difference between it and its neighbors is one. Oh, okay, this is getting difficult. Interesting. Okay, so... I turn them all to one. What about this one? Um, so I'm looking at this block. I say it can go to two. Well, if anything, math. Okay, this isn't going to be a 10 minute solve. I'm not seeing it. Ooh, this got difficult. Um, there's an algorithm, obviously, here. Basically, removing one from the outerness of it. So all of these turn to one. That's kind of a weird initial cheat. Then we look at all the ones that are not touching a dot. Is that the rule? Yes. All the well, okay now we look at all the twos that are not touching a one. That's the three. Okay, I figured it out. The base case is going to be interesting. It probably can be done in a cool way, but I don't see it. Okay, let's um, drop all of this. Oh. Mind equals zero. I can see part two and part three requiring like the real algorithm and not just this cheeky thing I came up with. But let's do this. Um, well, cuts. Um, it's basically all, so to abstract it, for every iteration I go through, okay, I'm, what am I looking for? I'm looking for to make things to other things. Got it, got it, got it. So, um, let characters equals dot hash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I bet. Oh, let me look at this. It's probably bigger than this. Yeah, there's more than nine in here. So it's the depth, not the thing. Okay, so. Um, okay, so I think we cheat and we just go for the ones first. Um, for let. Well, let's cut. World equals incoming creatures. Whoops. Uh, split. Cast row count equals world dot length. Cast call count equals world zero dot length. Okay, we have that for let r equals zero. R less than zero count r plus plus. For let c equal zero, same thing, steal it, don't type it, except for the column count, drop that. There we go. Um, I've lost all my indentation, and it's back. If world r c equals the pound, world rc equals congratulations you're a one these are strings though so if you split dot map s s um, let's just do the cheeky split right there 
and there are ones, not exclamation points. Locked mind up one. Great, we have that. Now this is where the generic infinite checking should work. So I'm looking for all the twos that don't touch the previous characters. So these are zeros. I'm gonna count you as zeros. So congratulations, you just got upgraded. Um, uh, map S dot replace, congratulations. Uh, the dots, not the quote dots, all dots. You just got changed to zeros. Yep, and you know what? We're gonna go. Yeah, hold on. We'll go there. And then we'll map number. Let's we'll throw the whole, the actual numbers themselves. There we go. So if they're ah, technically this hashes ah. Now replace those with those. Ah, dang it. The ah. T T equals hash. Equals negative one or congratulations plus C, your number. Great, so if you're negative one, because you're the weird one, I use negative one as my weird index. Congratulations, you just got upgraded, you are one. We remind you for the first time. Now, this is kind of like a wild thing, because we need to keep going, because the algorithm I'm going for is. Find all the ones that are not touching a zero, and these dots are zeros in my equation. So, while true, const, well, let parent equals, looking for ones that are not zeros, let previous equals zero, let next, give her my thing go, equals two. For now, I need to do my full loop. Then for each of them, I'll make do cardinals. For RC, drop that, drop that. So a break here because I don't want my computer to explode. Um, for cause n of RC, so I need to pair these up. And this is gonna be neighbor R, neighbor C. N R and C. Yep, let's make four of these. Gonna go all my neighbors. I could have just done these as offsets, but I'm here now. I always do things slightly different. Um, if so, basically, if something in the world is not undefined, if world N R and C equals undefined you don't what the heck was that undefined oh i've lost my symbols symbols equals nope goes there goes there continue what have i done wrong what are you telling me oh th it was there it was there great now here we go um let can go go deeper equals True. We assume that they can all be dug down deeper. We only say it can't be dug deeper when we find a previous around it. So here we go. If world and R and C equals previous, then oh no, you cannot go deeper. Just stop digging. Why even look? If can go deeper than world R C equals next locked mind plus plus and then our final thing is once we're done doing this um pre plus plus current plus plus next plus one so these are all derivative they don't need to be like this um and let's start it with equals blocked mind these three do not want to be in the loop be out here um let's see <laughs> If started with equals block mine, break, you did nothing, you failed. Well, you reached the bottom, technically. Okay, let's do it for that. Don't kill my computer. Cannot read undefined zero. That's right, question mark dot, optional chaining. That row might not exist. 35, zero. I returned zero. I didn't mine anything. Hey, buddy, why didn't... 
I need to look at my world. Um, console log world dot map r r dot join. And if they're numbers, I should be able to do that. Should co whatever. Try it again. Look at me. Show me what you got. They're all zeros. Whoops. A daisy. That's on me. I replace the dots with zeros. Oh, that's not a dot. That's any character. Darn regex. No regex. And that's an infinite loop. Okay, please die. Please die. Please don't kill my computer. Please die. Please die. Terminal time. Da da da. Uh, NPX just zero three. Nope. Just terminate the job. You have. Oh, am I using V test? What am I doing? Okay, I'm using V test. Sure. I need to go inside, which means you need to give up. Give up. Where is the give up? Um. Fancy extensions, never. You know what? Maybe I don't need to give up. I got enough RAM. Let's just do this and be like, hey, something's running in the background forever. Let's ignore it. Okay, here we go. So I assume we keep doing this and we say, hey, if we haven't mined anything, give up. The can go deeper is the problem. It always ends up true. Um,. Find a previous. Wait a minute. If you're on the edge, too, that also counts. Um, can't go deeper equals false. What I really need to do is log the frame of every time. Well, I need to log the world every time. It's going to be a lot of logs. My computer's not going to log it for sure. Okay, let's do this, and I'll just put the breakpoint there, and I'll just go to it. This is where you say, see my output. Output. Where'd you go, output? Give me output. Okay, there we go. So we have got the one off by one. So the twos did what they're supposed to do. Okay, sing it again. The threes. Hey. Oh, previous. It's not equal to previous. It's less than or equal to previous. Um. Is it less than equal previous? I don't know. We're going to do the risky thing. Hit it again. We shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have done that. Playing with fire. Computer going to hate me soon. Good. Good. So I'm curious what you actually hit on. Well, who can go deeper next? Okay, you found it. You broke. How many did I get? 35. I did it. I did it. I did it. Okay, computer's just dying. I love it. I hate it. Give me my real input. Drop that. Back ticks. Paste. Drop trim. Now this one will run, but fail. How dare you. How dare you. How dare you, um, load window. So I have the thing, I just can't run it. Fail, yes, why fail? This number, sure. Got it. Finishing map that must be very more complex. Oh, we're just, we're just gonna say number go big. And hope I didn't mess up. Well, it's time to see how much I love my RAM. Um, yeah, we're not giving another input. Okay, they just went number one bigger. I wrote it efficiently enough. I did it. The final map, Royal Lands. Oh, great. Also applies to diagonals. Is that literally it? Just go diagonal. Just go diagonal. I love it. Don't don't look at all the NANs in the terminal. Pretend the NANs do not exist. They cannot harm you. 
but even VS Code's starting to not appreciate that one. Okay, and that one's called part three. Man, I really gotta fix that typo. Um, Diag, there we go, for Diagonal Alley. And I just need to add the other things here. So I have these four. I'm just gonna duplicate them, because that's the lazy way of doing it. And also, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. So I need four more additions. So I have, oh, this is horrible. I've done this in a really hard way. Plus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Ah, oh, jeez. Two pluses, two minuses, two plus. Oh, my, oh no, my eyes are failing me. It's these four. So I need two pluses in the front. And then I need two minuses in the back. One of the pluses is a plus. On another line you go. My eyes hate me right now. Okay, you're a plus in the front, you're a plus in the front, minus in the front, minus in the front. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, I think I got it. Don't look at Batman. It's faded my terminal. Number go burn. No. The answer length is correct. The first character of your answer is correct. What even is this telling me? First time I've got it wrong. So I'm really confused about this. I am confused. Oh, they also had the example that I literally could have not used, which I chose not to because I was smart. Very, very smart. I didn't see it. Copy for a trimming. Where is it? Part three. Here we go. It's trim paste. If this works, I'm really sad. 127. Oh no. Okay, so yeah, it ain't working. The first is there. Then we can only get four. Yep, I agree. Okay, time to look at the map with our eyeballs. Do I have this console work? And I've been killing my performance with that thing. But RAM don't care. I know it's really CPU. Ah, uh, that's not where I want you to bug. Oh, okay. It's just all the scrolling is eating. Oh, it's that. Okay, great. Let's zoom. Yeah, I can't see the output despite it being somewhere. So let's look at it. Where did you go? Team, where'd you go? There we go. This isn't what I wanted to look at. This is a really big input. I wanted to look at part three example, which is, the, oh, it is a big input. I put the wrong thing in here. I don't know. The problem was me all along. Now, if this does pass, we'll be really worried. Because that means whatever I have works with the example, but not the real one. Okay, I'm really happy. Okay, now I'm going to be really worried if this passes. Great, I'm off by one. That's not the best, but I can figure that out. Ow. Wait, why do you scroll a half an inch? Boom. Aha, this too. What are you do what are you doing there? So for some reason you thought you didn't have anyone around you with a thing of less than or equal to one. You got a lot around you that are less than or equal to previous. It's supposed to be less than or equal to previous? What's it less than current? I don't think that makes a difference. 
feel like it doesn't. Can they start collapsing some of these? It's becoming painful. Oh, it doesn't want to collapse, of course. Okay, we get better. No, 29.30. Wait, so I, do I just literally minus one my answer? Ah, oh, boy, this five minute timeout. I give them props for anti spamage, but dang, five minutes is tough. Um, it's not negative one because it's a, literally a bad position. Okay, I need to determine what one it's flipping basically and look at it. So it's going to be a few iterations till I find the one I'm looking for. But I can do that. Find me row and column two, three. So let's look with my eyes. Zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. Wow, this is literally the first one. Okay, apparently, none of you can go deeper because none of your neighbors are like this. Let's look at all your neighbors. I bet I just missed one of the angles. That's why you do it the better way. So let's stop that. Redebug that. Get back up there. Okay, so. None of them are undefined, so this is great. Let's look at your friend. Who's your friend? Here's zero, so. Yeah, I'm looking to turn ones to whatever's, to twos. I'm looking at this position, right? Wait, what's R? R is zero. Um. Ah, oh, this is good. I can't go back on these really. Um. Tough, 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 tough. Okay, let's skip. I'll just skip and I'll I'll backtrack it. I know these are all my values. I'll have to look at them. Okay, and then let's. Um, no, no, give me on the next line. Getting that. RC. I know I should use RC. Nobody cares. And then question mark dot, of course. You're all a bunch of ones. Well, I don't believe you. Because you, right here at RC, where there are four on single line, zero, one, two, three. Yeah, you're right here. You have a neighbor who's a dot, so it's literally my thing is wrong. So I need to look at them all and see, no, no, not look at those, no, not that. I need to look at my coordinates, but generated coordinates are wrong. Three, three, two, four, three, two, two, four, one, four. Um, so look at all the threes, three, 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 four, three, two, three, two, zero, one, two, three. I can really count. One, two, three. Ah, this one's not supposed to have doubles. So plus, plus, negative. You're supposed to have negative in the front, not positive in the back. <sighs> it was me. It's always. No! I fixed it. I fixed it. Plus, plus, negative, the negatives aren't the same. I did not fix it. Yeah, and like I said, always user error, okay. 10290. Off by a hundo, that's scary. Working on the example, but not the real. <laughs> okay. That's a deep breath. It's got to be this, so it's wrong. Um, so I'm just going to be like, hey, let's look at all these 
dumb the things I calculate to figure out what other ones are wrong. Because that is my assumption at this point. It literally matters not what I hit it on, so let's just hit it on this one. Get back up there. Did an output. Of course it didn't. Don't search and replace, just look. Okay. One zero zero one. Negative one zero zero one. So the positives and the negatives. Double positive, double negative. There are four diagonals. Why is there a double positive? I feel like something's wrong there. I, I my pattern recognition says something's wrong. Maybe yeah, they should be mirroring. Oh, there's a double negative. It's right there. It's at the bottom. I can't see it with my eyes. Because, yeah, double positive is... To the right and down one. This is to the right. No, this is down one. Both of these are down. One's to the left, one's to the right. Both of these are up. One's to the left, one's to the right. Um... Uh, Seeing a more wrong. What does the edges say about the universe? Because this, this is the first one we've had edges on it. My edge handling is if you're undefined, just go off. You're you're bad. But I have a feeling that might not be the rule here. Okay, shut up. I've seen that. Edge. Okay, I need to understand the thing. Yeah, we're doing a pause. So as we dig down, we do more. If that's the vision, does that mean? I feel like I put that in because I broke an example. What, I'm running against the wrong one. Um, passes. If I get a different number, I might. And that's a lot of console logins. Literally, I need to make a list of what I'm putting in. So we're getting to that point. Okay, I also don't need those sitting around. I probably need to start visualizing this, but it is a lot to fit on a screen. So let's let's start. before and after because I need to look at it frame by frame you know what Since I can't see this let's not do this anymore here we go okay let's look at the world I said look at the world you can can I not I thought we could mount this now Okay, that off by one is killing my eyeballs. Um, where is that going? Where is it going? Just ain't in here. Um, well, it's going into a void, so I will live with the off by one. Oh, you know what? I'll do this. Um, oh, we're not console logging. They're saying new line plus. Yeah, but my time down? Okay, great. Dang it. Ah. Okay, this is not an exponential back off thing, but I really thought this was it. Um, I need to get rid of these, these zeros. They are killing my eyeballs. Okay, it's a little better. Oh, look, see, I saw her on. I love it. 
I mean, everything looks right here compared to the original map. This is what I would anticipate. That random dash at the top. Is that it's the top of this picture? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks weird because... There, okay. A little easier to visually track. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is going to be tough to debug because it's basically my eyes. A lot of them convert to twos, not all of them, of course. So I'm just looking for problematic twos at this point. Why isn't this one a two? Why aren't you a two? You can be a two. Why are you not a two? Is because your friend converted first? Tell me why this one, these three, these four cannot be twos. Um, less than or equal to previous, and can go deeper. Less than or equal to current. No, wait, we're saying why you can't go forward. Okay, let's look at the previous one. I see that one there. Yeah, there's a gap there. Let's not look at the gap. Where the heck did the gap go? <gasps> if you're a zero, okay, you have to be current for me to transform you, buddy. I can't. I can't dig twice. Um, so if if it's not current, if world R C not equal, come on. I felt like I did this somewhere, but obviously not because it's making it through. I guess islands are only what trigger this, or yeah, inverted islands, whatever the heck that you want to call this. The number changed it slightly so another number okay about the visual debugging I shouldn't have been so squeamish about it it's on me let's continue please have up history I love you okay yeah we're pretty good about this one this doesn't do much for the eyes did this fix my two problem yes look at that look at that they're, be, they're respecting their islands. Now it's the real fun part. I gotta just. I think this is honestly it, so I'm gonna focus on the time. But I'll do one more iteration because we're gonna see more patterns as we get a third layer deep in the algorithm. Really takes over. Where'd the threes go? Oh, I'm at the top of this. I'm not having hit the the bottom, so I have two logs of each. There we go. So here's the thing. We have those bottoms. They're digging deeper because I assume there's like a force field or a wall or something. If that's not the case, and this is going to be wrong. Yes, this is this is the pattern I expect to be seeing because usually this one will be a three and this one will be a four, but we're looking at the diagonals. So this two cannot be a three because there's a one here. I can't wait for someone to turn this into like ASCII or grayscale art or something. It's gonna look so cool. And this one very much feels eyes of Sauron. I'm sorry, this looks like there's an eyeball. This are flamey effects. It just made me realize. I thought I mean I made the assumption that with everyday codes, everybody codes, all these inputs are unique to each people. Which may be possible. Maybe they just like hard coded certain aspects of it. Yeah, I'm looking at this three, barely cutting it out here. Yeah, I'm honestly I'm not looking at the picture anymore for validation. I am very much betting on this is it. It gonna work. Please work. I would much appreciate you working. I assume if I were to like make this curl request manually, it'd be blocked for the same timeout. No. <laughs> okay, so if I just hold on, one one seven four. I did put the new number in there. Yep. Okay, I think we have to just run to the end. I can recognize it easier there because this step by step is not giving me much. 
Okay, let's look at the entire world. Right, we got eight lines. That's what I anticipated. Yeah, I have a concern about things being processed at the same time by different, like, race conditions, maybe. So if I look at this one, it's a weird one. One, two... So we got this ridge here, fours, five, six, sevens, eight. Hey, you can't be a nine because you're surrounded by all these sevens. Uh, you can upgrade to an eight because all the sixes. Ah, it looks fine. Do we not consider the walls? If I drop the walls or I treat them differently. Reread the prompt. Hmm. I'm reading. Larger size requires more accuracy. I, I didn't mean to be more accurate. Several separate areas. Diagonally adjacent. Okay. The rules are the same. Several separate areas. That's what changed. I'm supposed to do something different about the separates? Oh, you need to treat the map as it's surrounded by things and they were different. Ah, oh, y'all didn't want to bold that one, did you? It's, it's on me, it's on me, it's on me. Um, so if the thing is off the edge, then you cannot go deeper. I mean, I have my answer, I think. Well, give me two minutes to hit it in. Make sure this still works on example. Oh, I assume it does, it does. That's all the logs. One on one, seven, eight. This is why reading is good. <laughs> That's also why giving yourself time before the problem to mentally prepare probably is good. Ironically, the algorithm I chose, which I barely call an algorithm is fine if I wanted to do it smartly it would while going through the initial one automatically can generate a list of coordinates or a sub grid of the ones that could be the next one because right now I'm looking at all of them and I'm looking at all of them and I'm looking at all of them what I first should do is look at all of them and then look at only the ones that could possibly grow next time and then after that, only look at the ones that could possibly grow next time. So like, I'll keep track of all the ones I set to current. That is how you do your speed efficiency here. But I got a lot of RAM and CPU and GPU, even though it's not doing anything in this equation. So I can be bad. Even leave all my console logs in. It's also the year 2024. If this doesn't work, I will panic for the next five minutes. That is one advantage of having a consistent thing instead of it being a, like an advent of code a little bit. Finally, woo! I did it. <clears throat> I will be optimizing and explaining and doing all of that when I come back. From my break. Toodles. Hello, hello, hello. 
here I am to refactor my code for everyday everyday codes quest three. This is what I solved it with and I committed it as is. So I'm going to refactor it and make it better. As a reminder, this is the problem where you're given a grid of places you can dig and as you dig them you count out how many blocks you've dug out or how many things have you you've, you have extracted with the trick being that for areas that are not in contact with the previous elevation you can dig further which is a really weird way of saying you can like dig slopes but they can't be too steep so the difference between them is how like st steep they are it's like a 45 degree angle and if you can imagine the angle cannot be greater than so then you count up all the ones you dug and you're good the next parts were just more and supporting diagonals so I think this is easily refactorable into a single function with a couple of flags to modify behavior it's mainly one flag the flag being do we look at diagonals or not so I'm going to take the final solution for the most complicated one and that will be the base of making the simplified one first I think of a really good name for this um, so what is the thing we're doing mining maestro Mine. Mining. What are we doing? Mine area. Mine area. There we go. So, and this is the um the map I like to call it. So this is our map. All these other arguments are unneeded. Um, let's see. So this next one is going to be our diagonal conditional or something that determines. Hey, are we caring about the diagonals or not? Um, I will just go for that. Care about diagonals. Great name. Okay, so we have a console log here. Oh, this is amazing. This is basically the only place that a conditional makes any changes. So let's get. So we'll do it the bad way, <laughs> and then we'll clean this up, right? Make it work, make it right, make it pretty. So this is the bad way. Um, cares about diagonals. If so, then you're going to use these. If not, you're going to use these. And that is how we do that. I did not like that. It's an array of tuples. Oh, you're not seeing it. Um, will that help you? There you go. Nope. Oh jeez. Okay, I'm just gonna cast this entire thing as number number. You're an array of two number tuples. Get over it. And yet this extension is still new on this machine. Diagonals. This is awkward. Diagonals. There we go. So we have that. So now I'm just gonna drop these two functions. Not just into the void yet. I might still need them. Yeah. So let's call it mine area and true for the first four. One, two. Eh. Okay. That's a. That's not a real task. Let's drop that one. <laughs> two three I even put my example part two in here Jeez Louise let me fix that oh I didn't have one okay so it's the first three one two three paste go to the end get past to the trim drop save false for those there we go for the next two I guess Go to the other side, trim, and true. Oh, jeez. 
No, oh, jeez. I've goofed it. It's all gone. Okay, should be good enough. Let's start with the easy one. Ah, let me up there. Part one. Dang it. Okay, does the part three still work? <laughs> Oh no, everything's broken. Did I put non-diagonals in here? No, these are all the diagonals. Um, what did I do? Okay, let's start with part one, the easy example. 25, it's supposed to be 35, is that correct? Supposed to be 35. Jeez, I changed one thing. Care about diagonals, you also get these ones. Ooh, that's right, part three was like the walls changed. We changed our behavior of the walls. Um Okay, it doesn't explain why part three fails, but let's just Ah, uh, okay, let's look at my part two code. My previous. Can go deeper false, continue. False you false break huh interesting so if you can go deeper you set it to what it is and you mine the block if you can go deeper you set it to what it is mine the block these are behaving functionally the same both with a while if nothing changes do all that okay I guess I'm using my eyeballs Let's see what we got. Um, yeah, part one. Let's fix that. Oh, go go has got stuff in there. Nice of him. Well, it's not doing anything. Um, <laughs> collapse. So stop. Wanting to look at you. World. Yeah, the world is what we're logging. Um, let's do. So do one up here. Oh, not construct trivia. Before. After. Okay, let's look at that once more. Before and after. You did nothing. What in tarnation happened? Equal current row column. I mean, we never hit this true, which means we always flip it to false. Um, sure, let's just, let's see what's going on. Okay, we're looking one two. Give me the world. There we go. So row one, two. So it's top left. Um, yeah, you're not going to get nowhere with that. How many have we mined so far? 25. All right, so we don't get to mine a single one. That's our failure. Um, okay, so I need to skip until row equals two, column equals zero, one, two, three, four, four. Either way, it's row two. So let's... It's, it's gonna move on. So, yeah, so two, three, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, here's the one. You should be able to mine, so let's see why you fail. You're good. You're good. That's all four directions. Whoa, why are you going further? Um, yeah, uh, what the heck is this NR and C that's optional? Okay, what does this evaluate to? Because that's the thing I changed. I think I goofed it. 
Ah, it's an empty array. When did that happen? Okay, so what this is doing is supposed to grab either. Ooh, this must be parentheses. That's on me. Oh, whoops. So what I was doing, I was putting this array or this array into this larger array as a sibling. What I wanted to do was to spread either this array or this array, each as an individual item in this inline array, adding either these four tuples or nothing. But I wasn't doing that. I was doing bad stuff. So I bet it's all going to work now. Yeah, let's drop that. Console. Well, let's just run the whole thing. Let's hit it. Boom, like a charm. Okay, so we have functionality restored. We refactor into a single function. Let's think about doing this in a better way. So we need to, at least I'm going to prefer turning this world into my own map structure of numbers. Row count, column count. Do these ever differ? And even if they don't differ, I think supporting non-square worlds is a nice thing to do. Okay, they differ, so <laughs> I'm going to do that one way or another. So now we go through all of them, and hey, if we find one, we mine it. Now, we already looked through this and found all the ones. Found all the negative ones, and we mined them. So let's not double our work. Let's kill all our birds. So as part of this map transformation, you're going to still be doing your map. So yeah, we're kind of blurring the lines here. Yep. But just reducing our iteration hit. And this is, let's rename this. Okay, that's, I didn't rename it to what I wanted. I also want to know, what are we aiming for? Earth blocks that can be removed from the marked area. Okay, yeah. Um, earth blocks removed. I love it. Okay, so we do that. We generate our world, our row count, our column count. Ah, these three numbers. Yeah, these seem to be completely derivative. Um, so what do I use previous for? Just a comparison. What do I use current for? A thing. What do I use next for? So they all literally have one use. Um... Let's go for the previous. That has the least value here. Let's drop that one and go for current minus one. I like that. It still works. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeez, I made, I made technically two changes. To, I didn't test after I inlined that calculation. Doi. The map did, didn't just do a thing, it actually converted it. Um, it changed them to ones, right? So if I do that and I just do that in line, will it make it happy again? It will. There we go. And let's conditionalize, or at least variableize this cost can dig here. I can dig here it's that otherwise it's I mean I don't even need to do plus C I can just say it's a zero this is all my all my two my only two options it's a dot or it's a zero so I didn't even need to do this replace watch we'll see if it still works yep because we either have dots or we have pound signs or number signs or hash nice um, I'm gonna map over all these because we want to transform them. Yes. Yeah, I think this is sufficient. Okay, so now let's do my next optimization again. Okay, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at there. Um, previous, previous. Minus one still works. 
as expected. Now I get to define which one I'm leading with. Am I leading with the spaces that I'm looking at to consider digging? Or the elevation I'm looking to dig to? Well, either one, it's just which one I'm keeping outside, and the other one can be derived internally. Yeah, let's go current, because that's the first one. Um, cost 2 equals current plus 1. Taking two, number not assignable to zero, one. Who said you were? Oh, you said that. Um, <laughs> who said that? Was it this map? Ah, okay. Um, well, congratulations. You just give numbers. Don't worry about them. Okay, I like that. That should still be functional as it is. <laughs> okay. And I believe one optimization I mentioned while I ran through this was that, hey, I don't need to keep looking at them again. I can just keep a map of the ones that are worth looking at. So I want to do that. But I want to first optimize this thing here. Because every single time we look at a cell, we recalculate this inline thing with this conditional wall. And it's fine, but it's a waste of, waste of life. So instead, I'm going to calculate at one time the directions. So let's do that. Um, first blocks removed, that's our big thing. We have our world. Let's cast directions, and then it's this. We care about diagonals, it's this. So the thing is, all these R's and C's, they don't they go away. Because we're just we're calculating the vector effectively or the change, so I'm doing this. And then I'm gonna drop the actual math, but the actual value. And why I did it that way is because you don't need the pluses, but you need the minuses. They communicate. And yes, it was a regex way, a multi-cursor magic, I could have done this, but we're practically there, so. This was good enough. There we go, now we have all of our directions. And then it's R-O-C-O. -O. Row offset and column offset of, come on mouse, directions, const, and R and C equals R plus R O C plus C O. And that, well, once I save it, it, still works like a charm. Calculate that once, we don't have to recalculate it every single time. I like that. Now for this one, can go deeper. We just look at all our neighbors and we're like, hey, if you're off the edge of the world, or you're, or like, the steepness between us is more than one. Yeah, I can't, I can't dig there. It's, technically, it's not more than one. It's greater than, or it's a certain directional. So if you're lower than me, then yeah, you're fine. Okay, I like it. So if we really wanted to, we could probably not carry this variable around and just iterate through the entire world one more time and do some math but that's complicated so we're not going to do that started with it's not inaccurate but eh, it's not communicating enough meaning um, that's actually a good one copilot Okay, so I think I'm good there. Now I want to go for the optimization of not relooking at the entire world every time. So, this coordinate system. Expect the land. Okay, so we're calling these lands. 
So cost considering lands is basically the coordinate of every land that we might want to look at digging at. And the way it's going to work is that we're going to go through all of them. Initially, it's just going to be the ones that are ones. Then as we do that, when we dig down another one, those will be the ones that we, we consider for the next time instead of looking at the entire world every single time. It's going to make... Yeah. Let's actually go to their drawings. Okay, so for the first time, we look at everything. We consider every single one for digging opportunities. We'll need to get the ones, right? The next time we look through it, we don't consider zero zero. We know we can't dig there because we couldn't dig there before. So now we only iterate through effectively all of the ones. So we want to look at these ones to see if they're dickable. Obviously, we find a subset are dickable. And then we only look at all the, the twos because we're looking to dig to three. You can't go from a one to a three. So you only look at the ones that have a potential of digging further. That's this optimization. So considering lands, I could do this up here as I map through. That'll give me all the indexes. Let's do that. Uh, map S R, and then as you map through, well, oh, did I just do the wrong one? Oops, R. Let's call this L. So these are lands, apparently. And then we have C. So if you can dig here, you're going to do a few things. First, you're going to add to the count. And then you're going to say, hey, you should consider this land for digging. And yeah, we're just going to do like that. Which at this point... You don't need to do that calculation here. You can just bring it down here and be like, hey, the earth blocks we're removing, it's for... We start off with however many we're considering, because we already dug one on all of them. So I like that. It allows you me to squish this back into one line and be bad. Okay, I like that. So now what we need to do is for cost R C of considering lands. We iterate through this const next lands to consider a new array. I'm seeing that this isn't the most memory efficient because we're basically the size of the matrix to creating that times two additional memory at worst case. I mean, it always gets less and stuff, but yeah, so we are paying the price in memory. But we got RAM. Next lands to consider. So let's drop one of them curlies. There we go. Next lands to consider. Push RC. And then this trick, we don't have to look at the counts. We can just say, hey, if there's no next lands or if like next lands to consider or considering lands splice zero lands dot length and we just want to add all of next lands consider so our while loop can be hey if we don't have any more land we're gonna look at digging we stop digging I like this I like this we can also just do this math at that point. But let's see if we didn't break everything first. Oh, oh, love it. I do want to do a little time traveling, though. So let me make sure, I just, just in case I do something bad. Let's go back to the bad way. Before we get all this fancy. So I just need to get this inner loop put back to where it was. Good, that's good enough. Okay, let's look at this. It looks like it's actually um, slower. Or 
It's faster and so much slower. It's slower. Who cares? <laughs> eh. JavaScript. JavaScript. You know, all these method calls and this damn manipulation. Not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's fine. Okay, next lane to consider. We push. We could also not push to a new one and just push to this one. Could do a reassignment. I don't think those details really matter much. Next lane to consider the length. And then instead of renaming it this, we can say lands Doug. Lands last Doug. Doug last. Now I don't use lands Doug again as a prefix. Um, for all of these, if they're not where you're going, well, this is a given. They have to be that, so that's a free check we can ditch. Love it. And then, yeah, we assume we can go deeper unless we are on a wall. So this check kind of happens once for all of the wall ones. So we do it here. I'll just drop those. I'm seeing an optimization where we only need to check this during our first iteration. Or maybe not even. We can do it up here. If you're on the edge, then you're, we're not going to consider digging you. We're gonna, still going to add you to the count, which means this count comes back up. But we're not going to consider digging you. Let's do that. Um, earth blocks removed. Congratulations. I'm going to keep some of this because I'm on a risky play here. If not R or not C or R equals, what do we call this? So if row, then that is, well, it's map.split length. Um, so I don't actually have access to that yet. raw rows minus one or gee that's a lot of ors or c equals uh, they are squares thankfully or I can go to s because s is raw row let's rename that I like it. So yeah, if you're bad, then you're bad. Yes, I've done this the worst way possible. Let's just see if it works. Okay, it works. Let's do it better. <laughs> yeah, we'll go for the positive. So if r greater than or equal to greater than zero and r less than r rows length minus one. We have part threes notes with a lot of edges. So if this is wrong, it'll be catching there. So if the row is the goodness, and I don't know why I'm putting these in parentheses. Drop, 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 parentheses. Okay, see if that still works. Okay, still works. Let's see if I'm just being paranoid. Okay, it does break. <laughs> Let's put that back. I am actually doing something, not just moving numbers around. Okay, so yeah, we never actually needed to check that, aside from the initial check. Good. Okay, so if the thing, if our neighbor is less than or equal to our current, then we can't go deeper. So I'm doing less than or equal to, and I'm doing a negative one. Could I just do less than and not do the negative one? Or would I have to do a negative two if I did that? Nobody knows. I could think about it, or I could just run it. Let's make sure this breaks. Yes, it breaks. 
So yeah, um, future me will explain exactly how this math works. But past me already ran through the code, so. Yep, and this can be functionalized if we really want to. Mm, what do we need to functionalize this? We need the R and the C in the world. That's all we really need. Um, love the world right here. Function can go deeper. R number C number. Because we're doing this little pattern of like defining our return type and then effectively setting it and then early returning. But we're not doing it on a function, which makes it a let, and you have to use a break, and it's all kinds of grossness. But now, we can just return false, or, at the end, return true for, can we go deeper? And now we can just say, hey, can we go deeper, RC? And make that so much cleaner. What the heck is current doing? Oh, that's just my depth. Um, hey, this could be a for loop. For let. Nope, I made making too many changes. Okay, lucky me. For let count equals one. Lands last of dot length. Current plus plus. Do that. Drop that. Drop that. Drop that. Sure, I guess we can keep that derivative. Oh no, current is not defined because I got rid of it. Can go deeper. Um, current. Sure. Feels weird passing another argument. Uh, I'm fine with it. Yeah, that can be broken down further. So yeah, for all of them, if you can go deeper, set it, and return the lands up. So we're processing, we're filtering, and then we're basically so <laughs> cons lands dug equals lands last dug dot filter R C can go deeper R C current. That we filter, and then for every single one of these, we update the world, and then we basically keep it. So lands dug is this, and then we iterate through them, um, and we dig to it. Effectively, we update the world. So we, we're keeping two things in state here. We're keeping the next lands we can dig. We're keeping track of the world. I'm trying to think of a way to consolidate them both without it being too ugly. And I'm not thinking of anything, so it sounds like it's going to be a bit ugly. So we're doing the filter, and then we still want these. So for cost land dug of lands dug, we want to. RC oh, still want to do that side effect. So again, we're mixing a little bit of functional little for loop for each. E. Mm, maybe we go for each RC. I don't know. I mean, I know I can do it. I don't know how all my linters are gonna feel about me putting an expression. Okay, not too bad. So we still need that, yes. Now we need lands dug to basically keep it and get rid of the old one. Lands last dug, which needs to be way up there. Oh, that, that splice is an expensive operation. I don't think I want to do it anymore. Lands last dug equals lands dug, because we're literally keeping nothing from the previous iteration. Yep, so we filter, we for each, and then we reassign. If we just did a map here, the map would be useless, but we could get our side effect in. I really want to do that. We could get both of our side effects in right here. 
And I think this is more readable because it's saying, hey, lands dug. Like, these are the lands that we want to lands to dig. There we go. And then this one can go back to being lands dug, past, future tense. So we go through all the lands we dug and we're like, hey, can we go get deeper on any of these lands? If so, then the lands to dig for each of them would dig. <sighs> Digging depth. There we go. Eh. I don't know if this variable is really giving me much. I mean, yes, there's some optimization, but it's making the noise. Okay, I'm liking this. Um, so this is good. We can be really bad, though, and start overloading this for a loop <laughs> with some of these expressions, like this thing that we do at the end of every time. We would have to bring this variable into or above our for loop, but we could do it. I think this is far enough, though, honestly. Oh, look, it got fast again. That's great. I don't know what I did, because I wasn't really looking at the, t the timings of it. But we did it. Yeah, some comments here will go a long way. But that's future me's problem. I am pretty happy with this. Drop that. Improve 03. Solution. And I will call that good. Hopefully that has been helpful.